Welcome to Rockstar Doctor Life. I'm Melissa Longo. As a chiropractor, I believe we have the profound ability to impact our communities and people's health on a global level, while also enjoying rich and rewarding personal lives and giving attention to the things that matter to us. Each week, you'll hear an inspiring conversation to give you ideas and insights to rock your practice, pursue your passions, find more connection and meaning in your life, and create a life and business that works for you. Hey there, everyone. Welcome to another episode of Rockstar Doctor Life. I am thrilled, as always, to introduce you to another great doc, someone who's doing great things in their community and raising a little guy and, and also has a really great message to share with us today. Welcome to the show, Dr. Laura Dobrinsky. Thanks for having me. This is awesome. So uh, as usual, I'd love for you to start with just give us a snapshot of what is Dr. Laura doing these days. You know, where do you practice? Tell us what a typical day is like. What have you got going on? All right. Well, um, I am in Waterdown, Ontario, which is not far from Toronto. No. Nope. Um, and I'm here in Canada with you, so that's awesome. Um, I am. I'm in the office about four days a week. Um, I'm, again, about 20 hours a week, which is great so that I can be at home with my little guy. You'll probably see me a lot in the community. Community is a big focus in our office. So um, really been just getting out in the community, really spreading the word about chiropractic and uh, self-care. So that's really been the focus for my practice right now is um, branching out of the office, getting into the community, really providing more impact outside there. Um, But again, making sure that I'm balancing my hours in the office and at home as much as possible. Mm-hmm. And have you found anything specific that works for you? Because I know that's likely, a, you know, a conversation that rolls around in most of our heads. Anyone who has children, do you have um, hours specifically to the practice and then hours when you're at home or does it all sort of blend together? Well, being October, we were just talking about this. I mean, September was a busy one because my little guy just started SK. So it was first time at a, at a, a bigger school, a big, big boy school, we call it. Mm-hmm. Um, so I really had to adjust my hours. So being a single mom, um, I have to be there to drop them off, pick them up. So I have had to work around that and adjust my hours accordingly. So um, I really do my best that when I do have him, that I'm the one dropping him off and picking him up. So I've had to to work around that. My practice members have been amazing. Um, so still very supportive and, and being there, but definitely had to had to work around that. Mm-hmm. And but you've had uh, Noah, your son, since as long as you've been in practice, your own practice now. So that has that been something that you've been constantly, as he's been growing these last five years, been adjusting your practice hours, or do you have a really great support network of, of childcare? Yeah, no, I've got. Oh my goodness, I've got a great family. My family is always there, um, even in my office. Uh, Becky Dwyer, if anyone has met her, she's an amazing chiropractic assistant. She's super helpful. Noah also is in the office with me too, which is great. So um, when he was uh, younger and even this summer, he's been at the office hanging out. Definitely our, our little mascot at Construct Health, um, <laughs> which is awesome. So helps all the other little kids that are new to chiropractic and their adjustments uh, get comfortable, which is great. Um, but yeah, no, always, always balancing, always adjusting, um, adjusting uh, my hours just to make sure that it, it works for him and myself. Yeah, and it's something I always remind parents about. You know, you don't have to have the same schedule the whole time you're in practice. Practice is a long game, and so is parenting. So what you do when your child is an infant and you're trying to juggle breastfeeding and nap time, you know, might be different than when they're playing sports and you want to get there after school. I know that lots of docs have shifted their their practice hours as needed because they want to be at home with their kids too. Definitely, definitely. So your practice experience has been you're in private practice right now. Have you always been in private practice? No, actually, when I started, I started as an associate, and I thought that was a great idea for myself because I got to really learn about the type of chiropractor I wanted to be, um, the population I wanted to serve, so it gave me that time to focus on that. Mm -hmm. Also, at that time, I had my little guy, so that worked out great. I had someone there that could help with my practice while I was off for a short period of time, Mm -hmm. and uh, very, very valuable, So, but during that time, about a year and a half, I... I decided it was it was time for me to do my own thing. I had a, a bigger vision for my office and what I wanted to do for my community. So um, two years into practice, so I opened up Construct Health, and it's been five years now. We're doing amazing. So uh, thankful for that experience, but uh, definitely, yeah, solo practice now. Mm-hmm. I think the associate situation is a really valuable one for a lot of docs, you know, to either get started and, and learn from other other docs who've been in practice longer. But also for many docs, it's, it's a great situation for them long term if they want to just walk into an office knowing their personality, knowing their skills. They want to just be a chiropractor. 
go home to their family and not really run a business. What was that transition like for you going from being an associate and then running your own practice? Mm. Taking on all those other hats that you have to wear as a business owner, right? Uh, it was it was very, very busy. And I, I use that word. Um, I don't like to use that word today because it, it sounds very negative, but it was it was it was busy back then because I was learning how to balance everything. Mm -hmm. So definitely naturally, and I'm an entrepreneur. I do have that that business drive in me to do my own thing. Um, but it was a it was a great learning experience on how to balance family relationship um, work, um, also you know drive your brand and your community. So um, a lot of learning along the way. It's not easy, um, but definitely getting the help from men my mentors and again my family and, and community was very very helpful. Mm -hmm. It's learning as you go along, right? Yeah, yeah, definitely. Yeah, and so what keeps you really inspired and focused right now within chiropractic? What keeps me inspired in chiropractic? Um, in all honesty, I, I it's my community. Just seeing their needs and mm -hmm. seeing that they really truly need us. Um, not, I mean, as chiropractors, but even more so as role models. So I'm seeing today, and a lot of times we talk about health, but we're not seeing, um, we're not seeing that happen. Us as adults or as practitioners, kind of role model what that looks like. So um, for me, that kind of that's kind of gotten me in my community a little bit more to talk about what chiropractic is mm -hmm. um, in terms of this, again, I mentioned this to you, the self-care side of things as well. So I'm um, really diving into brain health and like how chiropractic plays in with optimizing the way the brain works and, and brain health is self-care and, um, and trying to role model that as best as possible for myself mm -hmm. um, and for my community. So mm -hmm. yeah, so that's kind of inspiring. My community definitely inspires me. Yeah, and sometimes it doesn't have to be, you know, big events or, or big life-changing moments, but it's the day-to-day -day moments in our practice where people's lives are changing and you realize the impact that you're having that can really keep us grounded and fired up. Definitely. Yeah. Definitely. Now, when we were at, uh, we both presented at uh, an uh, Ontario event uh, back in, well, the spring now. This is being recorded in no, in October. And I loved what you talked about, about um, compassionate self-care for chiropractors. Um, let's talk about that. Like, where did that idea come from from you? And what are some of the things that you would love? I know you can't give your whole 20-minute presentation, you know, <laughs> in our conversation here. But what were some of the, the key points that you think docs should be aware of? Um, well, definitely I want, I would love docs to be aware of burnout and what that actually is or feels like. Cause a lot of times we don't know what that is. We think we have to completely hit rock bottom in order to feel burnt out. Um, I think it's important that if we're going to talk about taking care of our bodies and, and our brains that we need to do it ourselves as well. So again, what I talked about was courageous self-care and ultimately building up the confidence that we need in order to feel that we're worthy of that time for ourselves to take mm -hmm. care of ourselves. So that's something that I started talking about because I had to learn it myself. Mm -hmm. I mean, I feel that um, when I opened my practice, it was go, 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 um, taking care of everyone else um, but myself. Um, and I realized that in order for me to truly be able to um, provide the impact that I want, I needed to make sure that I was a priority along the way too. So I, from learning that, I just knew that this is something that other docs and other um, individuals in our community need to know about. And it's just truly the importance of self-care. And it's not just a night out with the girls or a night in um, with some wine and a, and a, you know, a nice warm bath, mm -hmm. but it's truly dive in a little bit deeper into understanding and having clarity about who you are, uh, what you want and, and, and how you plan to get that. So I found that clarity truly is is the key uh, to develop to developing that confidence that you need to be successful and happy. So a lot of times, if you find yourself, you know, burnt out, you know, not very happy, um, overwhelmed, we have to kind of uh, check in with ourselves and and see, you know, are we being um, congruent, you know, mm -hmm. with what our values are, and uh, if we're not. And again, I went through a whole bunch of different C's, uh, C words that um, help develop that, that confidence for yourself. But if we're not following um, uh, what's required to build that confidence, then, then ultimately we can feel burnt out because we're likely not going to be taking care of ourselves. It's like you're not taking care of your soul, right? Like what I'm hearing you is like, 
you've got to take care of yourself. We were talking about this in our pre-chat physically. You know, just this morning I went and had, I was adjusted, but I also had some active release done because I get some wicked injuries in my rib cage sometimes from adjusting. And it was like, yeah, I got to take care of myself more now that I've been in practice for almost 17 years because, you know, the, the that style of adjusting, you know, it, it adds up. But we can't forget the piece of taking care of your emotional and mental well-being because that I think is what a lot of docs deal with too. Yeah, no, I have soul self-care. And uh, actually I got back from a, meditation and yoga retreat this past weekend. And it was just that it was an introspection of yourself kind of diving a little bit deeper, um, you know, going through some uncomfortable experiences, uh, making yourself, you know, get uncomfortable, uh, to learn more about yourself. Um, very, very important. Yeah. that soul self care. Very, very, very important. Mm -hmm. So if there was one thing that you would recommend docs did or could implement today, if they're listening to this, what would that be? Um, I'd say be real with yourself about, um, who you are and what you want. Um, I think it's so important because a lot of times we kind of, in all honesty, even myself, um, I've kind of been driven by the expectations of others. And most of the time it's your family. Mm -hmm. So what is it that you want? You know, a lot of times we go to these seminars and we talk about numbers and we talk about the type of practice and, you know, sometimes then you go out and you do that, you cookie cutter it, and that doesn't feel right for you. So I would say, um, sit down, get some clarity on who you are, what you want, um, write out a plan about how you want to get there. Um, I say write because I truly believe (laughs) you put things on paper. It's so different. Yeah. Um, but write it down, um, and check in with that on a regular basis to see if that's, uh, if, if you're living congruent with that, if you're being consistent every day and, and, um, making sure that your actions and behaviors are congruent with, uh, with who you are and what you want. I think mm-hmm. that's very, very helpful. Yeah. And you know what I loved about it's bringing back the memory of being at the Alliance for Chiropractic event in June is that there was, you know, I love it when you go to an event and the speakers, no, no one knows what anyone's going to talk about, but somehow there's this beautiful synchronicity that, that happens. And there's this message that seems to be woven through. I mean, all 20 speakers are that weekend. Cause I know that's a lot of what I was talking about is like, yeah, you got to do you yourself in practice. You've got to like, be you and figure out what you want and then, you know, reverse engineer how you're going to get there based on knowing your, your skills and your desires. So that um, that's yeah. a great reminder for everyone here today. Now, um, it's also reminding me of, and I'm going to put a link into the show listeners to my conversation with Dr. Josh Wagner, because we talked a lot about um, what he believes one of the, one of the secrets that, you know, prevents people from getting what they want. And that's the, the ability to think that you really deserve it, right? And that's yeah. that self-love and that self-care piece of our soul and uh, there was a lot of great, great ideas in that episode as well. So I'll, I'll connect us with that. So you've got a little guy and we've talked about you balancing life, having him in the practice and getting to school now into kindergarten this year. How did your practice change when you became a mom? Um, how did it change? I think I felt, well, obviously having him as a little guy, that definitely helped build my confidence um, in seeing kids because I was obviously learning through him as well. So I feel that naturally um, focusing on his well-being, his health, I started to attract uh, more kids. Mm -hmm. I started to, and what I've noticed even as I, my practice um, continues to grow is that I naturally start to develop or to attract um, kids the same age as him. (laughs) Mm -hmm. Naturally, Mm -hmm. it just happens. So um, right now I, I do notice about that three to six, six, seven is kind of like, um, the majority of my, my kids in my practice. I do see obviously a lot of pregnancy and, and babies as well, but, um, I definitely noticed that after having him, that I naturally attract a lot more pediatrics. If that's what you're, you're asking. Yeah. It's, you know, sometimes people find that they're, um, like we talked earlier about, you know, their hours change or their vision changes or their goals They're for their business shift when they have a child, you know, they eat either for some docs, it sounds like it's really motivated them to create even more of a, of a business and a legacy. And for other docs, it's made them shift their priorities slightly and be okay taking a, a little bit of a step back. And mm. I wouldn't say coasting, but, but changing their expectations about how much they want to be in their business when they have a, when their family starts or they add more children to their family. Gotcha. Um, I think if anything, it's inspired me to kind of like learn more about, um, about children and their needs. Um, I'm doing a lot more work on the neuroscience behind play Mm -hmm. and the importance of that. So I will be actually, um, launching something, uh, or a a program related to that soon, which is really exciting. So it's just to kind of talk about the importance of play and child development. And I'm, I'm using my, my little guy and his friends obviously as, um, 
<laughs> as examples in this, mm-hmm. but I think that's what's changed is that I have him kind of in front of me and I've seen him grow and I'm realizing what he needs and, and then seeing my community and realizing what they need. Um, so if anything, it's actually inspired me to do a little bit more, um, but obviously balancing at the same time. Yeah, and it's now making me think of my conversation with uh, with Dr. Laura Foster, where we talked about using yeah. <laughs> your current interests and even the ages and stages of your kids to really fuel, you know, your practice. And that, you know, when our kids are young, like right now, you're attracting a lot of younger kids. For me, you know, I have a lot of kids in my practice too, but I also have older children now, and my interests have also changed. So as I start to change things with my own diet, well, next thing you know, I'm talking about diet in the in the office a little bit differently, or I'm talking yeah. about training differently because I've changed my training. So as we evolve as docs in our personal lives, it's a great way to then infuse it into your practice and not try to be, as you said earlier, something that you're not and try to create content or programs that really don't resonate with who you are. Because I think people really see through that. You got it. You got it. No, I always say, I mean, you usually teach or usually yeah, teach what you needed to learn. And I find that that's the way I always approach my audience because I do a lot in the community and I always want to kind of um, connect with them in that way. So it's almost explain through my experience and what I need to learn, um, educating them. Mm-hmm. Right. So definitely well, I get that. And I'd love to hear what you're, what you're working on with this neuroscience of play, because it's something that I've mm. also been passionate about. You know, my, my sons both play sports. My one has played competitive hockey for years, but I've always also been advocating that those boys and, and the kids have time for free play, you know, time when Got they're it. skating, when they, when they're not being coached, when they're being left as kids to, you know, with some supervision, obviously, to figure things out themselves, you know, to go there and make their own teams and to, to figure out how to do the rules and, and to be collaborative and to brainstorm. And I think that kids get a lot from the play experience in addition to, um, obviously, the, the fitness aspect, but they get a lot cognitive development from that. So what are you working on with that? Yeah, so um, basically just trying just creating a platform, um, a community for um, that's going to be easy for parents, but also for practitioners to understand um, bridging that gap between brain health and play. So a lot of times, you know, we get uh, information about the importance of getting our kids active, but we don't really, or may, maybe we do because we understand it, but um, the general public doesn't really understand how that relates to the brain and for child development. So it's kind of being able to go over the different types of play, the science behind it. So types of play being, you know, your creative or imaginative play, your active play, your social play solo play and what that means and even even we're even going to be talking obviously about screen play too Mm -hmm. so um because that's obviously a component too with all these screens and technology and um really diving into what's happening at the brain level when they're Mm -hmm. doing all of these things and then giving simple you know ideas of things that uh, parents or practitioners can be doing with uh, these kids during different stages of development um so for the parents listening what would be something you would recommend uh that they do like one thing that they could be doing with their kids or make sure that their kids are doing ah big what you just mentioned i'm really big about unstructured play yeah i find that we've have way too many parents thinking that the more programs their children are in the more diversified and healthier they'll be Mm -hmm. um i find the busy factor for kids is just super stressful um kids need to be able to play without a timer you Mm -hmm. know they need to be able to Play, um, with whatever's around them so that they can problem solve and be imaginative and just allow their body to move the way they want. So um, mm-hmm. unstructured play is so important. I think that that should always be given to a child every single day and better outside, obviously. Mm-hmm. That's a great reminder for all of us. So you're doing lots of things in the community. You've got this that you're working on. Um, mm-hmm. What are some of your best strategies these days for growth within your practice? Do you have any tips for docs? Yes, community. Get involved yeah. in the community. Build, building building relationships uh, or hosting building events. relationships. Yeah, building relationships, networking, um, getting to know your other businesses so that you're supporting them as well. Um, shop local, right? Mm-hmm. I think the more that you become involved in your community, the more people learn about you as a person. And I, I truly believe that. I mean, as you understand, people buy what into what why you do it not what you do sometimes Mm. so when they see that you're passionate about health and uh, what you do in your practice um, and that you enjoy your community and love your community then they're more um, likely to come in to chat with you about uh, what you offer yeah and it's also um it's it's such a great it's a win for everyone i think involved right it's they get to see you get to support their business they get to see a piece of your heart and soul and what you're doing as a doc and 
And sometimes it doesn't happen right away, right? I mean, how many times have we done a talk and or get bought, you know, stopped into a store and go to the same store for years and like five years later they decide they want a chiropractor and you're their chiropractor. So, Definitely. you know, it's always planting those seeds. Definitely, yeah. I, that's another thing too is to realize that things don't necessarily happen right away, Yeah. right? Like, I mean, you can create connections, but it doesn't mean that they're, you know, you're going to have someone coming in the office the next day because of that one connection. But um, I truly believe you keep fostering it and you keep um, putting the energy out there mm -hmm. when they need you um, and it's their time in their journey, then they're going to come. They're going to come in and likely see you and seek your, uh, your advice. So yeah. Um, I say, yeah, just get involved in your community. If you're going to go to a gym, try to go in the, to a gym within your community. Um, get out there and do some simple talks. Obviously, that's helpful. Mm -hmm. um, but I definitely find that, yeah, utilizing the services of my community, getting to know uh, my community has been the best. Mm -hmm. So I know you're reading stuff on neuroscience about play and you've talked to me just where at some yoga retreat, but what other resources are you using these days to support your development as a doc, um, as a human being? Like, do you have things you're listening to, other books that you're reading, programs that you're involved in, coaching groups, anything like that to share? Um, I like getting out. I like getting out of my house. So I do go to a lot of different um, seminars or workshops. So I just got, I just did the Tony Robbins. Um, oh, the one in Toronto yeah, recently. Yeah. Toronto recently. I was not so there. I went to that. Yeah. I went to that. It was, it was good. It was really, really good. Um, he was obviously very high energy, which is great. Um, you always need to get outside your comfort zone sometimes too. Mm -hmm. um, uh, who was there as well? Um, Jen uh, Sincero. So she's done some books, you know, badass mm -hmm. books. Yeah. I think I've read one of them. Books. Yeah her books too. So she was there again, speaking. So again, just getting out of my community, meeting other people that are about self-development and growth has been really, really helpful. Um, what are some other things? I really enjoy Brandon Burchard. I've got to meet him as well. Um, I heard him for the first time great. speak. Um, and I think you were there too at the Arcana yes, Summit there. in that's, Toronto. Yeah. Yes. That's where I got to meet him, which was awesome. So I got to chat with yeah. him a little bit, which was great. Um, read his book probably like 10 times now. So I keep it right by me. <laughs> That's great. My, my, my Brend, yeah, Brendan Bible, but um, yeah. it, it really keeps you grounded and gets you, it keeps you checked in because, you know, I love chiropractic. I continue to learn at those seminars and with my mentors about chiropractic. I obviously I'm going to Dr. Rosen's uh, cranial technique, um, mm -hmm. pediatric technique in Boston soon. Um, just continue learning that. But I find that if I don't put time into my self-development just as my own, as a, I mean, my personal development, mm -hmm. um, I can get burnt out. So it keeps me, it keeps me moving, keeps me motivated when I go to, to um, step outside a chiropractic as well. Well, it's like we talked about earlier, it's your soul care, right? It's fueling that yeah. part of your, especially now that you're a business owner, not an associate, it's feeding that entrepreneurial brain and, uh, and helping you manage that, that drive and that passion with some reality and, and making sure that you're not over, overdoing it with yourself. So you mentioned chiropractic, um, Dr. Rosen. Are there other um, programs or events that you've really loved that you think docs should check out? Yeah, I mean, if you really want to work with uh, kids, I think it's very important that you spend some time uh, with mentors that uh, can teach you about pediatrics. So um, the communication as well as the uh, confidence in delivering, you know, the, the adjustments. So the ICPA obviously has a great program. Mm -hmm. um, I love all those uh, teachers, mentors, chiropractors. I um, can call a good chunk of them my friends, which is awesome. Um, so definitely recommend the ICPA. Uh, Dr. Tony Ebel does an amazing uh, pediatric uh, uh, program as well. So I have done his and I definitely implement a lot of um, what he does at my office as well. So really, really great programs. So I do recommend those. Cool. So any mm. last minute um, or final thoughts for, for docs listening? I mean, you've been in practice for seven years now. Um, anything that you would share? I mean, we haven't really, we talked about a lot of different things, um, yeah. you know, any, any challenges that you've overcome that you want docs to know, like, Hey, you got this, you can get through this. Yeah. Like I, I think, uh, in a short period of time, I mean, I mentioned at the AFC, AFC when I was speaking, I gone through, I went through a lot in the uh, last three years, um, continue to persevere. Um, not always, uh, in a great place, but you know what, um, whatever it is you're going through, uh, if you can you know, really dive deeper into who you are and really get back in line with what your values are and what, and what it is that you want, um, you you can get through anything. So um, I would say stay, stay focused on who you are, your values, um, seek clarity uh, on a regular basis and continue to develop the, the confidence that you need because it will help you um, uh, succeed with whatever it is that you choose. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Yeah. Well, thanks so much for your time this morning. It's been a pleasure and I hope you have oh, uh, you. an awesome day. Thank you so much, Dr. Melissa. 
Thanks for being here today. If you like this show, please share it with another chiropractor and connect them with this message. We are always better off together than we are alone. If you haven't yet subscribed, head on over to Apple Podcasts or iTunes, and don't forget to rate and review the show while you're there. Be sure to connect with me on Instagram and Facebook, and find out more about today's guests and all things Rockstar Doctor Life by clicking in those show notes. See you next time.